Three. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Wayne's World? Five, four, three. Guys, you're naughty. Okay, guys. Yeah. <laughs> You're naughty. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to an interview with the award winning <laughs> <laughs> photographer, Elisa Saoki. Uh, hi, how are you? Hi. It's good to have you here on my channel for how many knows how many how many times? I don't know. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. I haven't uploaded this yet, so <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, many of videos to come with Lucy Saoki. Uh, I today I want to ask questions purely to Lucy Saoki, interview questions to him. So wow. 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 Let's begin, okay? And I'm gonna do this in a structure that's like serious question, funny question, serious question, funny question, back to back. Hmm. So the audience can stay with us past four and a half minutes. Yeah, and I absolutely don't know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so I am threatened. Yes. Buongiorno. Uh, okay, well, first of all, for some people that don't know you so much, can you introduce yourself? And also, like, how you got into photography in general. Okay, wow. Hi, I'm Ilusi Zaoki. I take photos mainly in Tokyo. It's been a few years now. It's been, I think, close to like six years or so since I started. Um, Why well, I've started photography, yeah. Hello darkness, my old friend. Okay, so I think first I was interested in photography because I, 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 I was working, I still do sometimes, so I worked as a fashion model for like 20 years <laughs> since I was a kid, mm. like little, really little. Mm. Um, and then I was always susceptible to, to cameras and photography in general. That is very strong. And when I became a university student, mm. I kind of weirdly noticed that like, oh, I know nothing about this thing that's shooting me, that's been shooting me for like 15 years. Uh. What is this? A center for ants! Um, so I thought that was a bit weird. So I bought my first camera. Um, and I basically didn't really use it much. Until a few years later, when I really started getting into... Like trying to understand some of the photographs that I was being taken and like why I liked them or why I didn't like them. And I noticed that it wasn't just the fact that like I was in the photo, it was just the fact that like the photos that I liked were actually good photographs. Oh, yeah. um, and that's something that I realized. And I was like, okay, I didn't know photography can have such a deep side to it. Um, and so I started studying it through like great photographers. And then I bought my first hippie camera to start taking pictures. And what camera was that? I can't help it. Before it got cool, it was mm -hmm. Contax T2. Ah, Contax T2. Yeah, before it was cool. Now it's expensive. Now that camera is like Hachiman. It's like yeah, uh, Juman. Like almost like a thousand dollars. Almost a thousand dollars. I bought it for like two hundred bucks. That's amazing. And then uh, I got tired of it and I sold it for like eight hundred. Oh, wow. yeah, that's amazing. So basically, you got into photography because you were doing modeling and uh, you wanted to experience uh, the other side yeah. of the of the situation. Yeah. And so did you did you start doing portraits because of that? Yeah. As well? Yeah. So actually I started with portraits. I was taking pictures of friends actually that were in the same agency as me oh, or, okay. or friends that I've known from modeling gigs. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's I guess it's kind of cliche now. There's a lot of people that do that, right? With like models oh. with like little cameras and taking pictures of their like fancy ass friends, right? So when you think about it, it's like that sucks. But but yeah, I I got kind of past that um, in the sense that like I wanted to take more photos because when you're taking pictures of people, right? You're inviting them to a place and you're setting them up and you're taking the picture and so like it takes some coordination, but also like you can only do it certain a few times a week or something right yeah sure but i wanted to take more photographs because uh, like yeah. i was just really into it you wanted to get good at photography in general yes exactly uh, and not then just set up these perfect uh situations too. 
Yes. Yeah, right? Thank you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's when I started just walking around with a camera until I realized that I was just doing it so much. And, I, and then I realized that there was a whole genre about that. Uh, Candid photography. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So that was the realization. And the street photography genre, or uh, however you want to call it, is, is so wide and vast. And, and like these days, the f kind of photography that you do, kind of street photography that you do, like what, what kind of subgenre would you call that? Hey, 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 he ain't playing no games. What is that? What is that? What is that? Do you have a category? Like, do you have a word in mind or like a categorization for the type of street photography that you're doing? Okay. Because yeah. I feel like you're definitely, like I've seen your earlier photos and it looks like very traditional candid street photography. But now these days you have uh, branched off into, I would consider like this genre. I, I can't even, t I don't even know what it's <laughs> okay. called, uh, okay. but it's definitely yeah. artistic. So uh, I don't know, like what, what do you call thanks. it? Oh man, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking. I, I would say okay. If one of y'all says some silly ass name, this whole class is gonna feel my wrath. I would say that I just call it candid because I also feel that like it's really hard to call, exactly call say what it is. Yeah. It's it's close to like the shadow light contrasty thing but it's not as i think i i honestly think it's not as simple as that sure sure um at the same time there are some like candid moments too and mm -hmm. there but sometimes it's just about something super simple like mm -hmm. color or light or patterns yeah. yeah sure um so although i can't really put one name on it it's it's more it's a little bit more abstract than that so it's uh, like to me it's like an abstract version of that kind of fancy shadow light plane photographs. Sure, sure. Um, and it's, this is how I like to frame it. Um, to me, it's not to sound super pretentious, I'm not comparing or anything, but it's like if Soul Lighter used a wide angle lens. Oh, that's actually, that makes sense though. <laughs> Does it? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, I. <laughs> And we've talked about this previously, like your inspirational kind of photographers are Saul Leiter and who else? Georgi Pinkasov, Pinkasov, okay. Ernst Haas. Ernst Haas. Um, who else? Harry Greer. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of Magnum guys, I would say. A very wide range of things, but the, I think the commonality between them all is the heavy focus on color yeah. and heavy focus on Something not as simple as mood, but the mood is there, mm. I would say. Yeah. And you shoot color like primarily? Primarily, yeah. I sometimes kind of mess around with black and white just because I kind of miss it sometimes. Yeah. And it definitely has the strengths that color doesn't have of like, as long as the subject is there, sometimes the photo works out. Mm. But mm -hmm. just with color, like if the color's not there to me, like the color, like, the photograph doesn't work. Mm. So. I sometimes kind of run away and try black and white again, and yeah. then yeah. I would like to see you shoot a little bit more black and white. Just to, I'm just curious because I've I've always associated your photography with color, and that's a good thing. But because that's like your tokcho, mm. right? And uh, his key feature, point, feature, characteristic, characteristic, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Beep. laughs> <laughs> button, yes, color. But I would like to to see you do some black and white. Hmm. and uh, see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Can you I'll, do that? I will do that. Cool. I will do that. Sick, yeah. man. Awesome. <laughs> okay, good. Next question. This is kind of, this is kind of a two-parter question, hmm. but it basically, they basically go together. One of the things that's different about you and me... Hmm. If you are who I think you are... ...is that when we are doing street photography, we will probably choose to take different photos. Naturally, sure. uh, you could say any photographer would choose to take different photos of different things because it's a reflection of your personality, of your own character, and things like that. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering though, like, to what degree is actually the choices of your photos 
based on who you are as a person that is half Japanese, half American. Mm. I don't think we're alike at all, Mr. White. Do your photos reflect on your, your background as a half American, half Japanese person? Because when I'm, I, I, me as an American person here in Japan, I'm taking photos of a lot of things that catch my eye because of the maybe Japanese characteristic, mm -hmm. the Japanese uh, feel of the photo. I, I want people to feel in, in my photos that we're, that we are in Japan. Yeah. But do you care about that? And like, what, what's, what's your thought process? And, and does that, is that personal to your, who you are? Yeah, that's, that's a really good topic, I think. Or maybe you prefer Hawaii. Mukalakahiki. Come on, you want to lay me? Pass the point, mahalo. I don't, I don't reflect on it too much, just because, you know, I've just grown up here and I've grown to live with the fact that I look different from people and people acknowledge that as well. <laughs> um, or imagine being able to be magically whisked away to Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. Similar photography, I think what, I, what I've learned was that I do have different perspective in the sense that like, I understand both like the inside from the inside, but also understand what people from the outside look at when they look at Japan. Mm. So in a sense, in a sense, I understand the stereotypes. So then it's my, then it's my freedom to either live by those stereotypes or stray away from them. Yes. Yeah. For example, when, when people think of Tokyo, they might think of in photography. They might think of like night photography, Blade Runner. Like, I could use that information as I want. Like, I could show that in a stereotypical way if I wanted to. Or I could be like, no, that's shit. I'm not going to take a photo of that. Yeah. Or I can take a middle ground and say, this is an approach that I learned. And I learned after, like, walking a lot and shooting a lot was that, like, those things do look good. But, like, overdoing it or, like, or, like, having a misconception of that is a problem uh. but like taking photos of everything that crosses your your, your your eyes and and you think are beautiful and pretty and then the Blade Runner thing being a result of that I think that's fine um, so you can take that as it is but I yeah. think the reality is that um, the stereotypes Japan somewhat lives up to them I think so, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I have yes. that in the way. In a way, though, I have that freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so when I take photos of shiny things at night, for example, mm -hmm. from a Japanese standpoint, it's like, oh, this guy is American, so mm -hmm. obviously he takes photos of these stereotypical things, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, yes. So, so would you say then yeah. you really cognitively think this is too Japanese? Uh, in characteristic and I will take a photo of it because it's it's Japanese sometimes I do that yeah because I, I yeah. do notice in your in your photographs um, if I were to not know anything about you that you're that you're Japanese that you're here in Japan I could probably guess that it's some other country yeah I could probably say that oh maybe this is in France or yeah or America somewhere and and uh, I wouldn't necessarily be able to point to which country specifically. Is that what you want? Is that I, that the, some of the viewers cannot really specifically say that this is this country or that country? Wow. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for noticing that. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not really intentional. It, yeah. It's really, honestly, it's, it's a result of like trying to understand better color to me. I think what people think of Tokyo and Japan, I mean Tokyo specifically I think, is, is the pure chaos of it I think. Which is fine, but from a color photography standpoint, it's a little bit too much sometimes. Mm, there is a lot of just overload in color. Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, in order to get like lush, contrasty colors, which I like, or, or it can be the fact that like, or the theme of the picture can be the lack of thereof color like to me that's still color too mm -hmm. like choosing those specific like scenes and 
are just end up being sometimes super, super focused, super specific, just really small, very specific places in Tokyo, I think, mm -hmm. um, which I personally find beauty in. So that's just the result of that, I think. That's cool. Mm. That's good. Great answer. Okay, let's do a funny one. Okay. Let's do a funny one, because I think I did two serious in a row. I gotta do one funny one. Okay. Okay. What camera that you've owned will you date, marry, or kill? Date, marry, kill. Three cameras that will, you've owned, that I you've will, shot. I will kill my Leica QP because it is very close to dead already. <laughs> Main camera, and it's also kind of broken as you can see. This is trying to come off. Date. Canon... <laughs> I don't even remember the name. Can That's R exactly my R5? point. R5? No. R? No. The small one. Small one. The D1. Oh, the G... G7X Mark II. G7X Mark II. Because... Now this is my trusty Canon G7X Mark II. It's also kind of broken, as you can see, it's kind of flat. First of all, see, I can't even remember her name. <laughs> so it's, uh -huh. this is a one night thing, definitely. Mm. Um, and it's... I know that it's not going to stand the... What do you call it? The thing of time. Uh -huh. That's what they call it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will marry my Canon R5. Oh, really? Because it does everything for me. And let's see, here's my Canon EOS R, which I use for work. It sucks, but it does everything for me. As in, like, you know, it sucks because it's heavy. Uh, it's a hassle to carry around. Okay. But it does everything. It does oh. video. Oh, wow. It does photos. Uh-huh. The battery life's long. Mm. It cooks for you. That's what I mean, exactly. It just does cool. everything for you. Nice, man. You don't have to, you just, you just got to bring it. It just does everything for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, serious question. Would you say you're a competitive photographer? Do you find ener energy and motivation in competition? Because I noticed that you do enter into some competitions with your photos, with your photography. And I'm wondering, do you have a competitive drive within you to produce your photos at a certain level that is above others. Above others? Yes, so I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering. Do you have a competitive drive? I think I did. Mm. I did. Mm. Because, well, first of all, like, although it may not seem like it, mm. I, I played a lot of sports when I was a kid. Mm. And uh, that was kind of my life. Like, mm. I, went, I even, this sounds totally random but i i played for example in a professional team in argentina oh. when i was a kid and then i came back to japan i played in a professional youth team here. what sport what sport soccer soccer yeah oh wow so and i i even went to a soccer school so it's like my life was centered around winning basically i'm by winning i win here and i win there now what um you know but the thing about art i think is is it's different there's no they you know, there's there's no kind of winning or losing, kind of, kind of, right? Well, uh, excuse me, <laughs> you, you have I won know. some competitions. Yeah, but but the thing is, like, mm. the reason I, so the reason I was so like into that mm. was because I started late. Oh. I don't have an artistic background, oh. so getting to shooting, like, I needed to, I needed to find kind of like a more bird's eye point of view of where I was at. Mm -hmm. and also needed something under my belt to kind of like, in a way, like reassure myself mm -hmm. that I am going towards a not so bad direction. Um, so when I started photography and I got really into it, mm -hmm. and I was looking at, you know, the Magnum guys, right? And I was looking at their, basically their resumes mm -hmm. and seeing that like all of them, not, maybe not all, but most of them want something at some point. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, I guess if people need to know me and I need to, again, reassure myself that this is a fine direction I'm heading towards, I need something at least. So that was kind of a drive that I had um, definitely for a few years. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, like now that some things have happened and I've had some luck there, like it does, I know that it doesn't really ultimately, you know, it doesn't sway if I'm a good photographer or not. Oh, I really? Think, you, you, yeah. don't, you don't think that gives you any kind of validation at all? Not really. I think, I think so. it does. I mean, it, somewhat, but oh. like, 
<laughs> but you're being humble. I, I appreciate that too. That's really good. That's really important. Yeah. I would hate if you just told me this, like, yeah, you know, I'm super competitive and everyone sucks and like <laughs> no, I'm the no, best no. and like it was, it was for myself. But I, you know? Yeah, but I think myself. that's a really nice, like, humble way to to kind of see about it. Like, but, you're competitive mm. to the degree that you want to check yourself I'm before with you wreck yourself. Oh, sure, I'm fighting with myself. <laughs> Right. All the time. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, like, another point I wanted to mention was, like, it's just so, you know, it's just so easy to take photos these days. Mm. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what? This always gets me. It's like, what makes me different than a random dude on a street with an iPhone? It's maybe I take better photos. Okay then what's a better photo, mm. right? Who's saying that this is a better photo? Mm. So like, there there's has to be some level of like competitiveness, I think, to, to art, unless, because then it's like, you get the shitty answer of like, oh, this art, I like it, so it's good, which I don't think that's a good answer. Um, yeah, so in order there should to be not, some little explanation. Right, yeah, so in order to not retort to that, like I like to think that theory, input in theory is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good, very good. All right, one more funny one. Okay. Uh, very quick, word association. Word association. So I say a word, uh -huh. and you say a word. Oh my! About that word. Okay. You describe that thing with one word, or two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't have many of these. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of uh, go off the top of my head. Actually, Instagram. <laughs> Hot babes. <laughs> You're not lying. That's, You're not that's what lying. works on that platform. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that came. That I don't came care about it. Out of left field. That's a, I didn't that's a that thing. One, like, it's I don't true. care. That's the thing. Like, I yeah. care the least about hot babes, but they mm. still appear on my feed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm not What's subbed going on? This, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just following dudes. Like, where are these? Girls, like yeah. half naked girls. Show me from. watches and cameras, right? And then yeah. they show me just some random girl's butt. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> it's just out of nowhere, right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Motorcycles. Yes. <laughs> Motorcycles. Motorcycles. Uh, injury. Yeah. Injury. Yeah, wow. I had a friend die from it, so. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. It's sure. okay. I said friend, but he was. Not like super, super close. Okay, that's okay. All right, well, forget about it. I seem to say about it. It meant a lot at the time. Don't okay. worry. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. good. I hate to talk about it, but it's kind of, it's kind of hard to not talk about it these days, but okay. Coronavirus. COVID. In one word. And how it's affected you, maybe. We've talked about this before, but I want to know your okay. one word. Necessary change. Necessary change? Yes. Mm. Especially in Japan. Mm, mm, mm. Not, not directly related to the, the you know, people impacted by the virus, but how companies and how society has to adapt to you know, more, for Modern example, yeah. tools. Yes, exactly. And Japan is one of these countries that still has fax machines or yes. really, I think faxes have started to go away. Exactly because of coronavirus and that's actually kind of a good thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. in Japan, like you need some really negative force to drive mm. people and that has been the force. Yeah. yeah, kind of Japan is this like stick in the mud. Exactly. That has to be forcefully pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, coffee. Chemex. Hmm? Chemex. Chemex? Chemex coffee. Chemex coffee, what's that? It's like a... I just bought one recently. It's, oh, it's like a, it's like a gigantic, it's a, like, Hendrick. curvature. <laughs> okay. Robot. Photography. Visual possibilities. Uh, visual possibilities. Yes, and uh, this is because I wasn't too like interested in just in general looking around what it's in front of me before I took photos. Like, I wasn't interested in tourism. I wasn't interested in fucking anything. But once I started taking photos, you start seeing things. Mm -hmm. And then I see the po also the possibility in photography. 
lot of a lot of noise. <laughs> That's Tokyo. It's just like the loudest. Do you know why I just fucking hate shooting outside in Tokyo? It's just yeah. like it's the just, noise. It's just like you're never alone. Yeah, that's true. Last question. Kind of random. Mm -hmm. What color do you like? And what do you gravitate towards? What, what is the color that? Yeah. You Something like? very close to purple. Ah. Like a very, very deep. Blue. That's mm. close to purple. I, I think really like. I know exactly the photo that you are talking about when it comes to this purple blue. Really? Yes. Uh, raindrops in the center, and then the escalator on the left, and then the street on the right, or something like that. I remember that photo that you have. Oh. Yes. I think I remember that. Yeah. No, we have the raindrops <laughs> in the center. Come on, bro. Come on, let me show it to you. Okay, okay, I was just like, which one? I'm gonna show you your own photo. I'm gonna show you your own photo. <laughs> I, just I take a lot of photos, man, I don't know. But like, this one. Oh yeah, that one, yeah. Purple. Kinda, yeah. Purple and blue. Kinda. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you very much for watching this interview with Ulysses Aoki. I hope I edited the audio of this well enough, and I hope everything came out okay. Uh, thank you very much. No problem. Um, you can check him out on his YouTube channel and his Instagram and his website and Twitter. Anywhere else? Twitter? Patreon. Patreon. OnlyFans. OnlyFans. Venmo. Venmo. Okay. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> PayPal. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again. Stay humble. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.